How we doing, good people? Today, we're going to be focusing on six more mind-bogglingly bad picks in drafts right now, okay? We made this video last week. You guys seem to really like it, so I want to double down on it. And, of course, we're doing all of our drafts at this time of the year on Underdog. These are best ball drafts. These are paid entry drafts, meaning the ADP is about as real as it's going to get for the information that we have at hand. So I'm going to throw the board up on the screen throughout this video, show you where these draft picks occurred, and then talk about why I hate them. But I don't hate you, and if you don't hate me, please consider subscribing to the channel and or dropping the button that looks like this down below. Let's dance. <laughs> All right, so here's the uh, the draft board. I was picking from the 109, as you could see. I took Puka, Chris Olave, Josh Allen, Cooper Cup, Rashad White, Kenneth Walker, Najee, whatever. Uh, this is not about me. This is not about my team. Although, looking back on it, I feel like I crushed this draft. Specifically, I want to point out a bunch of picks that disgusted me, all right, that made me throw my hands up and just backhand the person sitting next to me. First of which was this 303 Sam Laporta, uh, he's coming off this fantastic rookie season, right, double-digit touchdowns, one of the best rookie tight end seasons of all time. We ain't talking oatmeal, we're talking of all time. He's now the tight end one in fantasy drafts, but at this price, relative to the rest of the tight ends going, I just can't do it. It just it won't be me, all right? Going at the 303 right here, that's around where his actual ADP is in most drafts. This is how most drafts play themselves out, okay? Kelsey is going a full round later. McBride a full round and a half later. Andrews, Kincaid, and Kittle all two full rounds later. And the problem is not that I don't think Laporta can be the tight end one. Not that he's not the dynasty tight end one, even though I like McBride more. It's like, how confident are you in really saying for this upcoming season, 2024, that Laporta will outscore Mark Andrews in fantasy? Will it happen? I would say like Vegas betting odds would put money on it. But are you really two, three rounds more in terms of ADP confident enough that that happens. So, you know, I've, I've mentioned this uh, quite a few times in my videos up to this point in the off season that that top tight end grouping of Laporta, McBride, Kelsey, Andrews, Kincaid, you want to put Kittle in there, like they're all right next to each other for me in the ranking. I don't have a huge tier break between any of them. So for one of them to go just significantly higher is something that I will I will not be able to get behind, right? And I talked about Amon Ross St. Brown on my last video as well as on the Dynasty channel. Amon Ross scored 10 touchdowns last year, but had five end zone targets, okay? That is That was a minuscule number compared to what I feel like he'll probably get in this upcoming year as long as he stays healthy. So if we take some end zone targets away from Laporta, so I'm putting him towards Almon Ra. Like, what if if Laporta scored seven touchdowns this year, right? Like, touchdowns are very volatile. They're very yo-yo-ish. They're very roller coaster esque when it comes to season-long fantasy stuff. If Laporta drops from double digit down to, like, seven, which is not crazy whatsoever, we're not going to be like, fuck, he was the clear tight end one kind of, you know, aspect here. I don't see a ton of room to grow in the touchdown department when you have guys like Amon Ra, when you use... David Montgomery so significantly on the goal line. When you use Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield in the red zone, it's just this just this just ain't gonna work for me. So Sam Laporta is one of my least favorite picks where he's going in drafts right now. And if you guys are new to underdog, we do these drafts all the time. And like I said, they are they are buy-in drafts, uh, three dollars at minimum, and those are usually the ones for the links that I'm dropping into our Discord. And at the end of the year, you know, at the end of January, whenever the fantasy season is done, if you come within the top three places, you win money. So you're not obviously just paying $3 to mock draft. But this is how you stay on top of ADP. This is how you stay on top of player values. This is how you, how you stay on top of like trends and where guys are going throughout the summer, right? So if you go to underdogfantasy.com or you download the app, Android, iOS, whatever, and you use the code BDGE, if it's your first time depositing, they're going to match whatever you put down. So if you put down 20 bucks, you'll pretty much with our code have enough money to join $3 best ball drafts throughout the rest of the summer and really stay on top of the shit. So I could not suggest doing best ball drafts. I could not suggest using underdog fantasy, the app, they got slow drafts. So if you don't want to be like in tune with the draft all the time, they'll just notify you when you're on the clock and then you have hours to make your pick. It is the single best platform to actually prepare you for your season long drafts, your redraft leagues with your friends, family, you know, people that you're in college with, whatever the fuck you guys are into. This will get you absolutely fucking dimed up, bricked up for the regular season. So download the app, underdogfantasy.com, 
Use code BDGE if it's your first time depositing. And again, they're going to match up to like $250 on your account, which will give you plenty of money to play along with us. And we're always dropping links to draft with us, against us, all the guys in the office within our Discord. Discord's obviously free to join. Link will be down below. So we don't like Sam Laporta at 303. What can we do? Take the guy at 304? Incorrect. Because I also kind of hate Malik Neighbors sitting there at the 304. And hear me out on this one okay i think a lot of this has to do with the fact that like dynasty rookie hype right like the progressive players the cr- progressive fantasy football players are are likely doing a combination of playing dynasty fantasy football and best ball so a lot of the hype from dynasty which comes before best ball for the most part starts to seep into it this rookie hype is one of the huge themes that you'll notice in best ball drafts and and why i suggest you get on underdog now because obviously you know you're playing these drafts for money so you can take advantage of values whether good or bad in this case bad malik's going at the 304 now marvin harrison's going at like the uh, i can't actually see the board right now i think it's like the 112 201 202 in that area that is without a doubt by far and away the highest a rookie wide receiver has ever been drafted in underdog if it wasn't for marv malik neighbors would be the single highest rookie wide receiver ever drafted in underdog best ball drafts okay and he got drafted at 304 here his adp on underdog right now is actually 25 overall so three spots higher than where he went here I want to preface by saying that like straight up Malik actually might be my favorite prospect in this entire class. Okay. Like he is electric with the ball in his hands. He is such a fun route runner. He is a dynamite player that I have no doubt will hit his ceiling as a fantasy football player eventually as it relates to his rookie year though. And what you're giving up by taking him at the 301 or the 302, I can't get on board, right? We're looking at the Giants passing offense. They're they're not going to be it. They never have been it. And they likely won't be it with Daniel Jones under center. Daniel Jones has been their starter for five years now, right? He is not once, not one single time in his five-year tenure supported a fantasy wide receiver three. Not a one, not a two, not a fucking three. These are the best finishes from their top fantasy wide receiver year in and year out. Back in 2019, as a rookie, Daniel Jones, because he had a random touchdown spike here, Darius Slayton was the wide receiver 37. Outside of him, the next year, Sterling Shepard was the 44. Kenny Galladay was the 79. Richie James, that's fucking insane that in 2021, their best fantasy wide receiver was a wide receiver 79, and more insane that that man was Kenny fucking Galladay. Richie James in 2022, Darius Slayton in 2023. His best season as a fantasy player when he was a quarterback one in fantasy Daniel Jones was 2022 when his best receiver was the wide receiver 50 the dude has never thrown for 3300 yards he hasn't thrown for more than 15 passing touchdowns since his rookie year in 2019 okay now the reason I'm like okay with Daniel Jones as a fantasy player is because of that rushing upside obviously and he is coming back from the torn ACL which I probably should factor a little bit more into the way I'm drafting him but he's going off the board at like QB 30 right now so like I think that's uh probably priced in a little bit but DJ is just an anemic passer statistically and maybe Malik is so explosive with the ball in his hands and it's just such a big time playmaker that he could like elevate everything here and and really I I wouldn't be shocked I guess but I, I just don't think he'll have a breakout rookie year. And that is kind of what I'm drafting for when I'm in that 301, 302, 303 spot. I want someone like if you're going to go with Laporta, cool. There you go. You might have the number one overall player at a specific position. But when I look at Malik, like I don't think he's going to have a bad rookie year. I wouldn't even be surprised if he had like a, a great rookie year. But what a great rookie year realistically looks like is probably 70 catches, 75 catches, maybe a thousand yards and like five touchdowns in this offense where they don't throw for passing touchdowns. So by all accounts, that is an elite rookie wide receiver year, right? But when you are sitting at the 304 or the 301 and you're passing on guys like the top tight ends or uh, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, or like Kyron Williams, Travis Etienne, who have that like needle moving type of uh, fantasy upside, that is where picking a guy like Malik Neighbors, who in this passing offense feels insane to me. So Laporta, Malik will stay in the third round. We'll stay there. I don't want to talk about young wide receivers. Zay Bay Bay. Now, Zay Flowers went off the board as the 36th overall pick in the third round at the 312. And I get it. We shoot for youth. We want to hit the breakout before the breakout really happens. And he had a breakout last year. I don't really know why I'm having so much trouble getting on board with Zay this year as like an upside fantasy play. I think he was pretty much what at least I thought he would be coming into the year. High volume, line of scrimmage mixed in with some explosive plays. What 
I think the biggest issue is here, and I think you'll hear this narrative kind of peppered throughout the offseason, is his splits with and without Mark Andrews. Now, do we expect Mark Andrews to be healthy for the entire year? I don't know. He's dealt with a lot of injuries recently, so maybe he does miss time, and maybe it's not relevant to yap about all the the big spikes that they had without him. But when you look at the numbers, they are extremely fucking clear, extremely obvious. Like his fantasy points skyrocketed. 8.8 half PPR when Mark Andrews was in the lineup, 14.7 without. 17.4 full PPR fantasy points without Mark Andrews in the lineup. Receptions went up, touchdowns skyrocketed, targets went up. So that makes me pretty fucking nervous. Uh, I just, I mean, this Baltimore offense is never going to be a very high volume passing offense. In uh, Listen, in full PPR, I am a fan of Zay Flowers, but this is also half PPR. These underdog settings are half PPR. You're drafting a giant lineup. They're, they're starting the best players for you week in and week out, but it's half PPR, which means it is more touchdown dependent. These types of scoring settings, like the guys who score the touchdowns are going to be the ones that end up getting into your lineup. And when I look at the Ravens right now, look at their team makeup. When they are down by the end zone, when they are in the red zone, when they are within the 10-yard line, who are they more likely to go to? The 5'9", 180 pounds A Flowers or Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, Derrick Henry, who just entered Baltimore? Okay. That is uh, that is one of my issues. It's like when you're playing in a half PPR league, you need to score touchdowns. You need to put up monster yardage games. I don't know what we're going to get from Zay Flowers in that aspect. All right. So rookie year, 77, 858, and five stat line. This year, could he see a spike? Absolutely. That could, that could jump up to 90 catches, 1,000 yards, six touchdowns maybe. I don't think you're necessarily disappointed with that, but like I have a hard time really finding the upside in Zay Flowers' game, right? Like when we look at what Lamar Jackson, like we, we just made the same point with Daniel Jones, right? The highest finish of any fantasy wide receiver in a Lamar Jackson tenure was Hollywood Brown in 2021, who finishes the wide receiver 29 in fantasy points per game, okay? So – Said it with Daniel Jones, Malik Neighbors, Darius Slayton. Same thing here with Lamar Jackson because Mark Andrews is his clear number one target, his clear target over the middle. It's his clear target in the red zone, down by the end zone. So that scares me for Zay Flowers. I also think that, like, I don't know. I guess with Zay, he's a good player to me, like a, probably a very good player. Not necessarily a great player in my eyes. Um, and it's just not in an offense that I feel great about banking on the passing game for everyone to eat here. Okay. I also think that like Lamar's coming off of fucking an insane year. And, you know, it was their first year in the top monk at offense. So I definitely think that they could maybe improve and be better in the passing game. But he was the MVP. They lost some firepower on the offensive line. I think there can definitely be regression there just in the passing game. Uh, and realistically, they had Gus Edwards back there. Like there's a real chance that they just lean on Derrick Henry, right? They just fucking fall asleep on that man and let him ride to the promised land. So when you are at the 312, and you are looking for players to draft, and Zay Flowers is there, like, give me Cooper Cup, give me the elite quarterbacks and Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts over him there. So I, I don't like Zay Flowers at 312 at all. Moving down a few picks. Moving down in particular about eight picks. We have Joshua Jacobs, the newly acquired Green Bay running back. Josh Jacobs was coming in. Aaron Jones obviously left. I guess I have multiple concerns here, right? They draft Marshawn Lloyd in the third round. So not day three capital, day two capital, which signals to me he should be able to compete for a role immediately. He is an explosive change of pace back for now. Um, never saw a ton of targets in college necessarily, but over his career, he caught 34 balls for an insane 13.3 yards per reception. That is a crazy number. Last year, he led all of the NCAA in yards per reception, 17.8 yards per reception as a running back. Yards after catch per reception, 16.3. That is a fucking insane number. Like, yards per reception. The NFL leader usually year by year is like 18. It was like Brandon Ayuk. It was Jalen Waddell. This is what Marshawn Lloyd was doing at college. He played almost 10% of his snaps out wide, and he forced 10 missed tackles on 13 catches this year. So he is damn good in the passing game, and I feel like he's going to have a pretty major role as it relates to the Packers offense there. And when we talk about, like, what his role is going to be. Matt LaFleur has come out and, and said things about Josh Jacobs' uh, workload. And we'll put some stuff on, on the uh, screen right now, like Adam Leviton's tweet, him talking about his philosophy, no matter who it is. Uh, we like to platoon guys, whether it's two or three guys. Uh, Matt LaFleur is the same dude that gave Derrick Henry 215 carries to Deion Lewis's 155. Like, I think there's a real concern for a committee here. 
And you can go crazy in a committee, obviously, if you're extremely efficient. But Josh Jacobs is also coming off of his worst year uh, efficiency wise. And you're taking him in the early to mid fourth when I don't see a ton of difference in the outlook of guys like Rashad White or Joe Mixon around a round and a half, two rounds later than Josh Jacobs right now. I think Joe Mixon's in a very good offense that could give him a ton of goal line opportunities. I think they have even less competition in the backfield in Houston for Joe Mixon to be a three down back and to play in two and four minute drills and catch a lot of passes there. Rashad White coming off of a monster touch season. Again, all they added was a day three undersized back there. So like, I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Jacobs finishes with just as many touches, just as many goal line opportunities, just as many receptions or targets as these guys who are going around and a half later than him who didn't add a day two back to the backfield, right? And and you look at, again, Josh Jacobs' year last year, like every part of his efficiency was awful. Like outside of the top 45 running backs and pretty much everything, true yards per carry, yards per touch, juke rate, which is elusiveness, like breakaway run rate. None of it was good and attribute some of it to the Raiders offense. But at the same time, more often than not, Josh Jacobs has been a you know above average running back, but he's not the 2000 yard from scrimmage back that we got two years ago. I don't think he's that player. I think Marshawn Law is going to factor into this backfield enough that this fourth round pick will not be something that returns value to you. And thy last pick, I know I said six, but I meant five. The last pick that will also not be returning value to y'all is this fucking bullshit down here at six two. Lad McConkey, the rookie wide receiver for the Chargers. Uh, and and listen, he went at the 6-2 here. His ADP on underdog right now is actually at the 5-9. So you have to use a fifth round pick on Lad McConkey. I get it. You know, we could sit here and we look at McConkenstein as this fucking flawless prospect because of how much hype he got, but he's not perfect whatsoever. Like he's never really put together a full massive statistical season out there in Georgia. A lot of it due to competition, target competition, but he couldn't really rise above those guys. He's getting a bunch of buzz out of OTAs, which is not really surprising given the player that he is, right? He's one of those like gym class hero guys, very shifty. You put him in shorts, and of course, Lad McCockey's going to look great because he is a great route runner. But Greg Roman's coming out here. I'm seeing, I'm seeing like retweets of videos of Greg Roman coming out and saying like, Lad McConkey, we could do so many things with him. He's versatile, followed by literally like the next sentence is him saying the same exact thing about Quentin Johnson. Okay. So like y'all will literally fucking salivate over anything at this point. I have zero doubt that Lavin Conkey can be a high level player in this league. And while he can move inside and outside a massive flaw that I noticed in his game was like his, his trouble getting off the line of scrimmage when he had press coverage. Okay. He, he was getting bitched outside whenever they put some physical cornerback up in his grill, he had a ton of trouble getting off of the ball. And I was, you know, not happy to see it, but happy to fucking see it. Went to the reception perception profile that Matt Harmon did on Lab McConkey. He's in the eighth percentile when it comes to success rate versus press coverage. So that backed up what I saw on film. And sure, like he'll probably be a slot guy a high percentage of the time and see less physical coverage. But there are so few playmakers in this passing offense that I think if Lad McConkey's even 70% of the player that everyone thinks he's about to be, there's going to be a lot of teams where their DC decides to game plan around Lad. And if it's like, okay, their passing offense runs through Lad McConkey, let's just put some physical coverage on him. And I think that's going to be a problem for him. And the fact that Josh Palmer is going 50 picks later than Lad McConkey in these drafts is like an atrocious oversight by the community. And I'm not confident at all that Lad McConkey finishes with more fantasy points, half PPR, than Josh Palmer this year. Okay. So that's crazy to me. And that's without even going into the Chargers offense, Harbaugh and Greg Roman and being a wildly run first offense. They draft Joe Alt instead of like a wide receiver, which tells you the mindset that they're going to have as an offense. 3,600 passing yards is what the season long line prop is for Justin Herbert this year. 3,600 for a guy who's thrown over 5,000 yards. That is how intense they're expecting a fall off of just passing volume in this offense. All right. Like I get it. I like Lad. I drafted him in a few of my dynasty rookie leagues, and I'm excited. But taking him over guys like even Alvin Kamara, like David Montgomery, is fucking insane to me, and it boggles thy mind, okay? So when we look back at this entire board of picks that disgust me, here we are, all right? We've got Sam Laporta at the 3-3, Malik Neighbors right after him at the 3-4, Zay Flowers at the 3-12. Because when I look at Zay, I'm like, look at the wide receivers going ahead of him. Diggs. DJ Moore, Michael Pittman, even George Pickens. Like, I think we're talking about a different tier of players there. Cooper Cup, Zay Flowers feels like the next tier down. I don't think he should be in there. Okay. So that's where I'm getting a little iffy on him there. But after Zay, we've got Josh Jacobs, Lad McConkey. Hate those five picks. Hate them. Make me sick to my fucking stomach. All right. And if you want to personally make me sick to my stomach, 
join Underdog. Use code BDGE. They will match your deposit up to $250. Once you do that, join our Discord. We'll be dropping links to to draft with us, draft against us, draft against your friends, whatever the case may be, in the Discord. Underdog Fantasy. Download the app. Let me know what picks on this board disgust you. And subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Love you. Bye.